All right, good morning and welcome everyone to the class on uh, Keys to Supernatural Ministry. Thank you for connecting to the class. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to, I've started the recording so others can use this. Um, let's take a moment to pray and then we will uh, get started. Okay. So, um, who wants to pray? Can somebody please take a moment, just pray with the class and then we can get started. Shall I pray first? Okay, please go ahead. Father God, we just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this privilege, for your presence, for your love, for your truth. Lord, Father, that we are learning, which sets us free, Father. Lord, as we learn about the keys to supernatural living, Father, we thank you that you have provided for us this ways and means, Father, that we may learn and bring down the kingdom of heaven. And Lord, Father, spread your word, spread your gospel around, Father, through your works, through your power, that manifests through your people, Father. Equip us, Father. Equip us to walk in that supernatural and Lord Father, walk in faith. And Lord Father, do the works that you have called us to do, Father. Bless each one. Bless our teacher. Bless pastor. And open our ears to hear and receive all the word in its fullness, Father. And glorify you through every aspect of our lives. We give you glory, honor, and praise for all those who are here. And we thank you once again for this platform, for this beautiful privilege that we have. We give you glory, honor, and praise and ask this prayer in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Good morning uh, once again. Uh, welcome all of you to the class. Um, we've uh, shared the PDF of what we're going to cover. Um, I'll just quickly review what we did last week, and then uh, we need to complete uh, uh, what we started talking about last week. So um, that will, that's what we will do today. We'll complete what we started last week. Just going to go ahead and share. I hope others will be able to join in. All right. So we did key three, and then we started key four uh, last week. Uh, so key three when we are ministering the supernatural is the power of the word of god where we just uh, you know uh, sometimes we just have to just bring the word and let the word do its work in the lives of people and i'm just going to just share some of the things that uh, we are currently doing as we're working with people just 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 expose them to the word and let the word and the word will do its work in bringing about change then we started talking about the renewed mind. So that's what we want to focus on. We'll finish that today. The fourth key in, 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 in uh, uh, either you know, experiencing the supernatural for ourselves or in releasing the supernatural for other people is uh, for us to operate with a renewed mind. If we do not operate with a renewed mind, we just cannot be a channel of the supernatural you know we have to we have to move with a renewed mind uh, that's important uh, so uh, in introducing the understanding of the renewed mind we talked about these three aspects we talked about the fact that there is the natural mind which all of us use uh, it's the mind that operates with the five senses and we we obviously have to use that for our everyday daily day-to-day -day life uh, we we process information that comes uh, through our five senses and we use it. But the natural mind is limited. It cannot understand spiritual things. So the natural mind cannot step into the supernatural because uh, it's limited to the five senses. Uh, we also made mention of the carnal mind. I'm just quickly reviewing these things we spoke about. Uh, the carnal mind, uh, the carnal mind is going in the wrong direction. It's focused on satisfying the evil desires of the body and soul. Now, uh, as we see in these scriptures, uh, Romans uh, chapter 8 and 1 Corinthians 3, it's very possible that a believer is living by the carnal mind. So a person can be a believer, 
but uh, they're not just living in the natural mind, but they're also in a carnal mind. That means they're actually pursuing evil desire. So that's completely opposite. Uh, you cannot see the supernatural uh, operating in the carnal mind. In, in fact, when, when we operate with the carnal mind, the enemy gains access into our lives. Uh, the um, you know, Romans 8 tells us that um, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Uh, the carnal mind will result in uh, death. And, uh, you know, uh, so spiritually minded results in life and peace. The opposite is the carnal mind. It results in death and uh, everything opposite to peace, confusion. So a believer, uh, if they are operating according to the carnal mind, they're going to just see bad things happen. It's just, it's not right. But then we talked about the third condition of the mind, which the Bible talks about, which is the renewed mind or the spiritual mind. This is the mind that takes on the ways and thoughts of God through his word. And what we were saying last week was for us to be used by God in the supernatural, for us to be able to co-work with God for the supernatural, we have to operate with a renewed mind. So literally, we are moving out of our mind. That means we are moving out of the natural mind and we're moving into the spiritual mind or the renewed mind. What is the renewed mind? It's a mind that takes on the ways and thoughts of God, how God sees things, how God works in situations. So that's the the renewed mind or the spiritual mind. And only when we step into that are we able to move with God and co-work with God to experience the supernatural power of God. And we were looking at this uh, little example from John 6. You know, we talked about how Jesus told his disciples, you know, he said, let's feed the multitude. And uh, we saw Philip, you know, Philip was processing with a natural mind. There's nothing wrong with a natural mind, but uh, you can't, you know, you can't see the supernatural with a natural mind. The, he was doing the calculation. He said, look, if we, are, if we need so many bakeries, only then we can, you know, only then they can produce that kind of food for all these people. And we need so much money, only then we can buy that kind of food, etc." So he was pro purely looking at it from a natural mind. But then comes Andrew, and maybe Andrew was operating in a renewed mind because he brought five loaves and two fish and said, Lord, if you, you know, if something can be done with this, hey, he he probably saw a potential for a miracle. That means, look, we've got a starting point. If this can be multiplied, the crowd can be fed. Yeah. So, and then we saw the whole process of the miracle happen for the 12 disciples to actually uh, go out and uh, see. The, the the multitude of fed, they had to step out of the natural mind into the renewed mind, meaning they had to take those five loaves and two fish. I mean, they each one had to take a little piece of the bread and the fish and walk to the crowd. So imagine you doing that, right? Uh, you know, Jesus, you're one of the 12 disciples. And he says, here, take this little piece of fish. You take this little piece of bread, start going. I said, Lord, what am I supposed to do with it? Go give it, feed the people. And, you know, imagine you walking out to the crowd and you've got a piece of fish and you've got a piece of bread. Now you have to step out of your natural mind and walk in your spiritual mind saying, Jesus told me to do it. I'm going to do it. And then the miracle begins to happen. Right? Under the, another classic example or illus, uh, incident that illustrates this is Peter walking on the water? Uh, we are all familiar with uh, with what happened now in Matthew 14 verses 22 and 23. So this is where we will start today. Okay. So Peter, again, this is an example of stepping out of the stepping out of the natural mind and stepping into the spiritual mind or the renewed mind. Right. So Peter is there in the boat. There's the storm happening. He's along with the other disciples. And then they see Jesus coming, walking on the water. And Peter says, Lord, if it's you, you tell me to come to you on the water. So he is asking for a miracle. So think about it. I don't know if 
I would have done what Peter would have done, right? But Peter's asking for a miracle. He is asking, Lord, if it is you, then you tell me to come to you on the water. He's not, I mean, if he wanted to swim, if he wanted to do it in the natural, Peter would have jumped out of the boat and swam to Jesus. That Peter could do. He didn't need a word from the Lord. He could do it on his own. That is the natural mind at work and the natural ability at work. But of course, the situation was not conducive for him to go and swim on the water to Jesus. There was a big storm. There was heavy wind. So this is not the right time. And it is impossible to just swim across. So this is not Peter's natural mind at work. So Peter himself, in asking for the miracle, Peter is stepping in to the spiritual. He's beginning to think like, look, the way in according to the ways and thoughts of God, because naturally it's not possible. I'm not. He's not going to go and swim in this stormy waters. So he's saying, Lord, if it's you, then you bid me to come to you on the water. He's asking for a miracle. He's stepping out of the natural into the into the spirit. So here's a key or a clue on how to make the transition. Ask for the miracle. So when you see an impossibility, ask for the miracle. It's gonna necessitate you and me moving from the natural into the spiritual. If Peter had decided to jump out and swim, which he could have done, he would have operated in the natural with his natural abilities, but he would not have stepped into the supernatural. But the moment he decided to ask for the miracle, he was moving from the natural mind to the spiritual mind. It's a simple key, ask for the miracle. How do we transition from the natural mind to the spiritual mind? Ask for the miracle, whatever situation. Think in terms of miracles. Think about asking for the miracle. It's going to force you and me to step out of our natural mind into the spiritual mind. Then what do we see? We see Jesus saying, come. So, you know, Jesus didn't scold Peter and say, hey, what are you talking about? You know, you can't swim, Peter. It's a storm. I mean, I mean, you can't come to me on the water, Peter. There's a storm. There's a wind blowing. And only I, the Son of God, can walk on water, not you. Jesus didn't rebuke Peter. He didn't scold him. He simply said, come, which means the supernatural is available. And it's there for the asking. So God does not rule out the supernatural for you and me. He doesn't say that's not for you. Right now, religion may tell us it's not for you. Uh, other people who don't believe me say it's not for you, but Jesus didn't. And Jesus gave his word. He said, come. That word means it's possible for you, Peter. Come. So the word of God is God's invitation for you and me to step into the supernatural, to step into the spiritual mind. So today, you and I, okay, somebody must have raised a hand or something. Let me just check. Uh, so, Pastor, I think quite a few people are waiting outside. Rupa, Samuel, Christopher, everybody is texting in the group. All right. <laughs> Welcome, Sorry everybody. No problem. Thank you for interrupting. Thank you for letting me know. Otherwise, I would be going on and on. I would not have known. Okay. Has everybody come in? Everyone's in? Anybody else? Yes, go ahead, Pastor. Okay. Fine. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, sorry, guys. I, um, 
I was, uh, um, uh, I was, yeah, I think people are coming in. I was on the PDF and for whatever reason, when I'm on the PDF, uh, people can't come in, but well, I think I can do it. I can split my screen. And if I split my screen, I will be able to see the PDF and also let people come in. So let's do that. Maybe I'll do that going forward. The only problem is I can't share my screen then. Anyway. Pastor, do you want uh, someone else to share? I, I can do it for you if you want. Uh, um, so if you share the screen, uh, if you share the PDF and then uh, I keep this on, how will that work? Uh, you can share the PDF from there. Oh, you're sharing the PDF, I keep this on. Uh, will that work? Uh, I don't know. I think there might be um, people outside still. Are there? Okay. Then I need to also see the chat, so that's another problem. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so uh, let's just quickly recap for the benefit of those who came. Um, so what we did, are there any more people waiting outside on, did you know from the from the WhatsApp chat group? Everyone's coming. Uh, should be in, uh, I, I don't see anyone else. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll just stay here for a while and then, then shift to the PDF maybe later. And uh, maybe we'll try out, uh, maybe co-host can help. Okay. Mm, I try to, we got to try that out, Tarun. I, I'm not sure, that's gonna, but uh, let's try that out sometime uh, and see how to make it work. Like you, you share the PDF and I just do the class, but I uh, will see how to how to work that out. Okay. Anyway, so for now, let's just go on. Let's just uh, finish. So, uh, yeah. So we talked about the, you know, uh, we just quickly reviewed, for those of you who have missed the first 10, 15 minutes, um, we just quickly reviewed, you know, what we did last week. Uh, and we also talked about the natural mind, the carnal mind, and the spiritual mind. And what we were trying to say is, okay, uh, you know, in order to see the supernatural, we need to operate in the spiritual mind. We also just quickly reviewed John chapter six, the miracle where Jesus multiplied the fish and the bread uh, to feed 5,000 plus people. Uh, and, uh, and, and if we were one of the disciples, uh, we, ha we would have had to step out uh, of the natural mind and into the spiritual mind in order to co-work with Jesus to feed the multitude, right? Because he, he would give a piece of bread and fish and said, go pass it out. So they just had to do it. And that was not the natural mind at work. It was being, uh, you know, stepping into the spiritual mind. So uh, we reviewed all that. And then we started uh, looking at just one more incident. So our goal today in today's class is uh, how do we operate in the spiritual mind? That's where we are, that's what we're building up towards, okay? Uh, how do we operate in the spiritual mind? so that we can be instrumental, we can be used by God to minister the supernatural. That's what we want to learn. So uh, so we started looking at the miracle of uh, Peter uh, walking on the water in Matthew chapter 14. So some of the things that we said was, uh, Peter asked for a miracle. And in asking for a miracle, he was forced to step out of the natural mind into the spiritual mind, right? So Peter was a very, he was a fisherman. So obviously he would have known to swim and he, he, he could have done it, but that would be the natural mind operating. 
using his natural abilities. But at that time, Peter said, Lord, if it is you, then bid me to come to you on the water. So Peter was asking for a miracle. And in asking for a miracle, he was shifting from the natural mind to the spiritual mind. So that gives us a key. How do we shift from our natural mind to operating in the spiritual mind? Well, ask for a miracle. So if you and I make it a quote-unquote habit uh, that uh, when we, you know, when we want to minister the supernatural, when we want to see the work of God taking place, we ask for a miracle. We ask for something that is not possible in the natural. So what we do, it will force us to move from our natural mind to our spiritual mind. Right? So when somebody comes to you with a problem and saying, you know, this and this and this and this and this is what's happened, of course, things can be done in the natural. And sometimes they may need to address things in the natural. That's fine. But when they've told you everything and you know that, look, uh, it's not going to be possible. There's nothing they can do in the natural uh, to take care of the situation. Hey, ask for a miracle. It'll force us to move from the natural mind to the spiritual mind. That means now I have to move with God, thinking and doing according to his ways and thoughts. That's operating in the spiritual mind. You're intentionally putting yourself there. And that's what Peter did. He said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you walking on the water. And then we see Jesus' response. Jesus didn't say, no, this is not for you. He didn't say that. He said, come. And what we were saying is every word from God, every promise of God is an invitation for you and me to step in to our spiritual minds based on that word. So every word from God is an invitation from God to step into our spiritual mind. So, okay, I can't do this in the natural but I'm going to see, you know, I'm stepping in my spiritual mind. I'm going to operate according to the ways and thoughts of God. So Jesus gave his word. Come. You can do it, Peter. Come. And so Peter gets out of the boat. and He walks on the water to go to Jesus. And then the last point, which we are all very familiar with, is the moment Peter got back into the natural minds, fear came in. Right? So Matthew 14 says, when he saw the winds, he was afraid. And he saw it. So obviously this was a very turbulent situation. The winds were blowing, the waves were high. What did Peter do? He got his eyes off of Jesus and he got his eyes off of the word. And he started looking at the storm. So I started looking at the wind and the waves. That means now his natural mind has kicked in. Say, hey, these waves are really rough. These waves are really high. The wind is really strong. And what am I doing on the water? He was afraid. And fear came and he began to sink. So once again, we are reiterating, if we want to walk in the supernatural, we have to walk in the spiritual mind. The natural mind cannot operate in the supernatural. That's what happened. Now, it was not Jesus' fault. Jesus given the word, come. It is not, you know, Peter can't say, well, this is the will of God. He wanted me to sink. That would be wrong because that's not what God wanted. That's not what Jesus wanted. It was just that his natural mind was at work. And the natural mind cannot operate in the supernatural. But then, thank God for his mercy. When Peter cried out for help, Jesus pulled him back on up and they walked back together. But there are these 
three key lessons we can learn. One, to move from the natural mind to the spiritual mind, simple thing, ask for a miracle. Two, the word of God enables us to walk in the spiritual mind. So look at the word, hold on to the word. What is the promise that you're acting on? What is the promise you're ministering on? on the basis of to the person it's the word you've got to look latch on you know just to use a simple word you gotta latch on to the word because that's the thing that's going to help you and me operate in the spiritual mind and keep us there the third thing we learn is this the moment we get back into the natural mind We can't operate in the power of God, the supernatural power of God. It's okay. So, having understood this, we're going to now go into a scripture passage. It really helps us uh, in a practical way uh, to minister uh, the supernatural, of course, but helps us you know operate in the spiritual mind in practical day-to-day -day situations you know we've, we've, we've used this picture of peter we've, we've taken these three insights from there but we're going to go now to first corinthians let me share the pdf or um, theron you want to you have the pdf with you i know we didn't plan for this but uh, uh i don't know if you have already yes pastor ordered. i'm trying okay you got the pdf Okay, do you want to, let's I give this. The notes, I, I have downloaded it, I'll share it, I'll try. And let's give this a try, let's see if it works. And then maybe in the future classes we can, you go ahead and share. And um, yeah, It says an error occurred, I'm not sure if I have permission. Oh, maybe, let it's, me, I, okay, settings. Yeah. Host controls, host, let you restrict what participant can do in the middle. Let everyone share their screen, this turned on, host, let you soon. I turned off, only host can share their screen. Okay, I've turned it on, so try please it. try now. Uh, yes. Not, uh, still not working. Okay. All right. Uh, we will uh, work this out uh, maybe uh, outside of the class and sort it out. Um, I'll just go ahead. Thank you, Tarun, for trying. We will sort it out afterwards. Let's um, let's use this PDF here and let's go forward. All right. So what we want to learn now is this. You know, since we know that operating the spiritual mind is so important in order to see the supernatural and we looked at it in both these examples um, you know can we can we learn how to do this practically right and and i find that this first corinthians chapter 2 verses, verses 11 to 16 where paul actually contrasts the natural man the spiritual man is a very very uh, useful text to help us understand how to do this. So we're going to spend some time here in this passage. Could somebody please read this for us? First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 to 16, please. Shall I read, Pastor? Please go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 to 16. For what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing sp 
spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, and they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is, who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you. All right, so this passage outlines for us how to know the mind of the Lord. And what's involved in knowing the mind of the Lord. That means knowing the ways and thoughts of God. Right? That's what we said is a spiritual mind. Uh, how, how do we do that? And what, what, is, what, what goes into that whole process of knowing the mind of the Lord? Because if you and I want to minister the supernatural, we must know the mind of the Lord the ways and thoughts of God, and operate in line with that. Just what we saw in the example from John 6 and Matthew 14. Because if you operate with a natural mind, there's nothing wrong, but the natural mind will only operate within, according to our natural abilities, what we can do in the natural. But if you want to see the supernatural power of God, we must operate in the mind of God. The renewed mind or the spiritual mind, right? So look at it, you know, uh, carefully with me. So um, verse eleven tells us uh, something that we all understand and know that the things of God, the, the the spirit of God, He knows the things of God. So the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is the one who knows the mind of the Lord. That's in verse eleven. But then when we end up in verse sixteen. It says, we have the mind of the Lord. Okay? So between verse 11, verse 11 says, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God knows the mind of the Lord. Verse 16 ends up with, we have the mind of Christ. So we end up receiving the mind of the Lord. So in between is, okay, it's telling us this whole way, how do we end up knowing the mind of Christ and knowing the mind of the Lord? Well, here's what it takes, right? So verse 12 says, helps us understand that the Holy Spirit has been given to us so that we will know what's freely given to us of God, right? So verse 11, the Holy Spirit knows everything about God, but he's been given, verse 12, he's been given to us so that we can know what's been freely given to us by God. That is, we can know the ways and thoughts of God, or we can know the mind of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is going to communicate this to us. But what must we do? Verse 13, but he says, when the Holy Spirit teaches us, he says, this is not going to come in words which man's wisdom teaches. I'm looking at verse 13. It's not going to come in words, which man's wisdom. That is, it's not going to come according to, uh, it cannot be processed. Let me put it like this. It cannot be processed. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, it cannot be processed with just our natural mind. But verse 13, we must compare spiritual things with spiritual. That means we must be in our using a different frame of reference, so to speak, to understand what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because when the Holy Spirit speaks, we cannot process it with a natural frame of reference. We have to process it with a spiritual frame of reference. That means, he says, we have to compare spiritual things with spiritual. What the Holy Spirit is saying has to be processed differently, not with the natural mind, but with spiritual mind, with the spiritual frame of reference. So, practically, when you're ministering, you, you know, somebody comes to you and uh, 
they're sharing the situation, the problem, and you're going to say, God, I want to minister supernaturally to this person. I want to, you know, see this person receive a miracle. And then the Holy Spirit may tell you, you know, to minister in a certain way. And he may tell you to tell them to do something, whatever. Now, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, to minister a certain way or to tell them to do certain things, you cannot process it with the natural mind, with just the natural mind. It has to be understood with the spiritual frame of reference because sometimes, or I would say many times, what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do cannot be understood with the natural mind. Sometimes, okay, maybe it's just a simple thing. You lay hands and pray, rebuke that condition or rebuke a spirit of infirmity um, or tell them to release forgiveness for something. You know, tell them to do this. How is that going to work out a miracle? How is that going to cause a miracle to take place? That's, you know, the natural mind can't figure it out. But we process it with a spiritual frame of reference. We know that in the spirit, things will happen. And so you process it with a spiritual frame of reference and you operate from there. Verse 14, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness, he cannot know them, they are spiritually discerned. So verse 14 says, sometimes, what the Holy Spirit is revealing, or what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do, may even be foolishness to our natural mind. That is, the natural mind will be unwilling to cooperate. It's like, hey, I, I can't accept it. But that's when we make a deliberate choice to go with what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Okay? Because these things are spiritually discerned. So we are transitioning from we're transitioning to knowing the mind of Christ and operating with the mind of Christ. So the Holy Spirit, verse 12, reveals the mind of the Lord. Verse 13, we process it with a spiritual frame of reference. Verse 14, we make a deliberate choice to follow the instruction of the Holy Spirit, even if it sounds foolishness to the natural mind. You know, if you and I were one of the 12 disciples and Jesus is saying, you know, go and distribute it, our natural mind will fight. Say, hey, how is this going to happen? I've got a small piece of bread and I've got a small piece of fish. How can I feed even, you know, it may not be even enough for one person. And what if I go there and nothing happens? What if I go there and you know somebody gets angry with me whatever you know the natural mind will have all these questions it's foolishness but be making a deliberate choice to go with what the holy spirit is saying because you've spiritually discerned you've spiritually understood it that this is the way god will work and so i'm going to go with it then verse 15. it says the spiritual man, the man who's operating here, who's with the spiritual mind, he's judging all things. That means you're not, you're not like, you know, you're not like going blindly. You're judging. You're very aware of things. You're re recognizing the natural. You're recognizing the spiritual. But he himself is rightly judged by no one. That means he himself is not right. He himself is, cannot be judged by the natural mind. He doesn't allow the natural man to dictate things to him. So when you are moving in the mind of the Spirit, which is what the Holy Spirit has given you, it's not like you're blind. No, you are judging all things. You are aware of the spiritual and you're aware of the natural. You're very aware. Your eyes are open. You know what you're doing. But you're not letting the natural man judge you and dictate things to you is what verse 15 is saying. He himself is rightly judged by no man. That means the natural. So you're, you're not letting the natural dictate, natural man dictate to you. And you're not afraid of the judgment of the natural man. So the natural man will not understand you. 
they may say things about you but they are not rightly judging you because they are not operating according to scripture and then verse 16 for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him obviously the natural man cannot tell god what to do but as we go with what the holy spirit has revealed to us what happens we end up with the mind of christ we end up walking according to the ways and thoughts of god so verse 11 starts off saying the holy spirit knows the things of god verse 16 ends up by saying look we've got it what he knows we've got and we are now moving in the mind of christ the process is i'm going to repeat this just quickly once again verse 12 the holy spirit reveals it to us verse 13 we must understand it with a spiritual frame of reference verse 14 we choose to go with what the holy spirit is saying even if it sounds foolishness to the natural mind verse 15 we don't let the natural man judge us or dictate things to us because we are look we are looking at all things both in the natural and the spiritual and verse 16 we now end up ourselves with the mind of christ that means we are now ready to move into the supernatural we know what god wants us to do we're going to step out on it we're going to operate it in it we've locked in to the mind of christ and then that's how we can minister in the supernatural Okay. Um, Samuel, I see a comment there. Let me try that out. Notice for me, and uh, I'll see if that works for us here. Thank you for sharing that information. Okay. So, any questions on 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 this whole thing of how do we move from the natural mind to the spiritual mind so that we can. Hmm. Good, thank you. Thank you, yeah, that works. This works. You can see the PDF and we can, uh, we can have, uh, I can see the chat as well. Okay, good, thank you. Any questions so far? On, on this. So what we're emphasizing today is if we are going to see the supernatural power of God released through us, we have to operate in with the spiritual mind, right? Take for example, and uh, in, in you know just simple example. If you want to release a word of prophecy, or you want to release words of knowledge, the Holy Spirit gives you the information, and uh, you know. You, you, you will have to process it with a spiritual frame of reference. Because immediately, if you try to do it with your natural mindset, God, I don't know what this means, how it's going to happen, etc., etc. Then you make a decision. Look, even if it sounds foolishness, I'm going to go, I'm going to minister this way. And then you, you know, you don't, you're not afraid of how the natural man will, what the natural man would say, or how the natural man would judge you, because you are judging all things. You are aware of the natural, you are aware of the spiritual, and you're choosing to walk in the spiritual. So you're not going to let the judgment that comes with the natural man hinder you, hold you back, put you down. And then you move with the mind of Christ. When you move with the mind of Christ, you release the word of knowledge, release a prophecy, and let God fulfill it. And then that will be, you know, a testimony that this was of God, and God is at work. Okay, any questions on this? Did we all understand it? Okay, everybody's very quiet. That means you are in your spiritual mind. You can now come into your natural mind and ask me questions. <laughs> Contemplate. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. 
so I'm assuming um, you've all followed with me. Uh, okay, and uh, I see your comments, you're contemplating, you're sinking in, okay. Um, and uh, fine, okay. Um, we're going to close now. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, you know, as profound as this concept is, Pastor, uh, probably it'll help maybe a uh, few of us if you could share a personal example from your life, uh, something that you practice or you've done um, in regards to what we're speaking. Mm. Um, okay, uh, simple, very simple things would be like, you know, when we give words of knowledge, um, um, when we give words of knowledge, uh, you know, the, the word that comes is very, it may be very strange, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, so, so many things have happened, but I'm just giving one example is, uh, so I just come, you know, the service was, the worship was over, I just walked up the stage and that moment and I saw a picture. I saw a, a, a lady playing on the piano and uh, 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 and I got a sense of, okay, uh, you know, she's going through a very hard time. She's going, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very very difficult time in her life. Uh, and uh, but God, uh, you know, but this is what she's doing. She's playing in a piano that's bringing ministering, bringing healing to her. But God is speaking to her, and God is saying that, you know, He will intervene in her life situation, so on. So. Now, when you see this picture, and uh, you know you're 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 coming up on stage. Of course, you're saying, "God, uh, you know, if there's anything you want to do today, you want to minister to the people, please let me know. Please speak to me." Right. So, Second Corin, uh, sorry, First Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. The Holy Spirit knows. Verse twelve, He reveals, but we have to process with a spiritual frame of reference. So immediately, you know now. Because you you know uh, you're kind of you you know the process you can move right so if I if I limited it to my natural say like hey maybe I'm just imagining something or what what nonsense is this you know I don't want to make a fool of myself uh, you know I I could I could speak myself out of giving that word of knowledge uh, if I just process it with my natural mind so what do I have to do I have to practice verse twelve which is I have to uh, spiritually discern it. I have to receive this and choose to operate with a spiritual frame of reference. Then verse 13, that means it's foolishness to me, but I'm making a deliberate choice to go with it because I know Holy Spirit's revealed something, right? And unless I uh, step out on it, no people are not going to receive it. I, I, I won't be able to release it and nobody's going to be blessed, right? And then verse 14, I know all these people are looking at me. Uh, some people think I'm crazy. Some people think I'm making it up. Some people think I set it up. Whatever the natural mind wants to think. But I'm not going to let the natural mind judge me or, or push me back because I am judging all things. That means I am aware of the natural. I'm aware of the spiritual. So what I do, I know uh, I've got this word. I'm going to release it. So I just say, okay, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a person. I'm seeing a lady. You're sitting at the piano. You 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 like to play the piano. This is what's happening. And if there's a time frame, like I might say, okay, this was happening in the last two months or whatever. You know, uh, just say that. Uh, and the, this is the message God is giving you. Right? Your you, your your life has been devastated. You're going through a difficult time. But the Lord is saying it's bringing healing. It's bringing restoration. So. Simple process, receiving a word of knowledge, looking at the details, then speaking it out. Then sure enough, you know, uh, sometimes we tell people to raise their hands. Sometimes if it is a little, uh, you know, you don't want to make the person feel bad. Uh, like, you know, if it's something very personal, you don't, you, you don't tell them to raise their hands. That different people practice it differently. There's no set rule, but we just follow that. You know, you don't want to embarrass people. So in this case, because it was a lady and it was very personal, I didn't say, you know, raise your hand, but come after the service, meet me. So right after the service, this lady came. 
Now, this lady was visiting the service. She had come down from the US. So it wasn't even a member of our congregation. I didn't know what was happening in her life, but this was exactly her situation. She was somebody who had just bought a piano. She had just bought a piano to her house and she was going through this very difficult time in her life. This was what was, she was playing the piano and this is what was bringing her healing uh, during that season. But the word to her was God is going to, you know, God is on your case and he's going to bring, you know, uh, 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 take care of that situation. He's going to do that. So for her, it meant a lot because she was not a member of this congregation. She's just visiting from the US. This is exactly what's going on. And that one thing was so significant, you know, playing the piano because that was exactly something she had bought to her house and she just started doing it. And, uh, you know, this. so, but for me, I had to go through this process where the Holy Spirit knows everything, but he is revealing a little bit. But then I go through this process of choosing to move from the natural mind to the spiritual mind. And then a supernatural, the supernatural can be released. So just one example of uh, a simple example of how, you know, we, we work through the process. Now, once you get used to it, then you know, you know, you don't have to look like oh, verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, 14. No? It's just something that you just flow in and out that yeah, I'm moving into the spiritual mind and I operate with my natural mind. Does that help, Samuel? I don't know. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and practice this. Uh, uh, go ahead and do this. I, I would say it's very necessary if you're going to see the supernatural. We've got to be willing to move with our spiritual mind. Okay, uh, we're going to wrap up. Um, I just uh, would like to request somebody to pray and then we will dismiss. Could somebody um, unmute and pray for us as a class and we'll dismiss. Go ahead. Okay, everybody's quiet. I can go first. Go ahead, Samuel. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time, this fellowship. Thank you for bringing us uh, to the truth of your word and uh, how you want to work through us. Father, on our own, uh, by our natural means, we are limited. We are confined and there's only so much we can do. Um, Father, help us surrender ourselves to you uh, and let you come into our lives, into our midst, awaken our spiritual mind so we can operate through our spiritual mind and we can be a blessing to everyone for your glory, Father. Use us. Um, if there's anything that holds us, uh, that, that makes our natural mind come up and doubt, uh, cause fear, anxiety, or unbelief, uh, Father, we ask you to heal us, make us whole, uh, make us strong in you, uh, give us your spirit, and, and enable us to operate through our, natural, uh, through our spiritual mind. Father, we thank you for Pastor Ashish and his ministry. We thank you for uh, making this EPC Bible College online possible. This, this is your work. We glorify you. We thank you for everyone who has been able to join in today. Uh, bless us, uh, enable us, equip us for this and everything else. We ask in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good uh, rest of the Amen. day. Enjoy your day. I'll see you again soon. God bless.